In the previous video, we looked at how we can connect um, a Python program to a SQL database. Let's do the same in Java. The process is the same. Of course, the syntax is different and there are some subtle differences, um, but let's talk through this. Java has a um, abstraction layer for this called JDBC, uh, the Java Database Connectivity Layer. So before we can do anything, we want to make sure that we import the JDBC stuff, the C JDBC drivers, and we do that by going import java.sql.star. Of course, we need to make uh, a class for this, otherwise things can't run in Java. So let's call it Java PSQL demo. And within that, we need to have a public static void main. Now, what we're going to be doing is take some input from first command line argument to influence the output of our query. So we're going to be using our arguments. Step one, like before, is create a connection uh, to the database, to the database. And again, we're running this on our server. The database is your username. So first we need to create a new class. Let's call it connection. Uh, it's a class. Con is the name of the variable. And we're going to try and connect. So. The way to do that is using the driver manager and get a connection to what? To JDBC colon PostgreSQL and now the name of the database, which is in my case, my username. Now this might go wrong. Uh, we might not be able to reach this, the system or we might not have the database. So that might throw an exception. Um, so we have to catch that. I'm not quite sure which exception it is, so I'm just going to catch the general one. And if that happens, I'm going to try and print a steer an uh, error message to stand it out. An error occurred. And we're going to print this, the error. And then we stop processing because it doesn't pay to continue if we don't have that connection. So done. At this point, what we can do is assume that we have a connection to the database. So we can start on the next one. The next one is to prepare a statement. Now this might throw an exception. I could put them all in their individual try catches and I really should be doing that. But in this case, I'm a little bit lazy. I'd like to fit this into a single page. So we're gonna um, put them all together in one loop. To prepare a statement, we have to de define a prepared statement and let's call it ST. And using the connection that we have, we're going to prepare the statement. Which one? Well, select all from grades, where course ID equals, well, I'm going to fill in what that is later. It's tempting to add plus and then a string here. We don't want to do that. That leads to all kinds of issues. So we're just going to put a placeholder, the first placeholder. If we would have multiple fields that we can um, set based on user input, we're going to use multiple question marks. That's an integer, so we're going to set the first parameter to an integer. And which one? Well, integer.parse int args0. Um, in this case, that means that the first command line argument that we're going to give to our script, we're going to parse as it was a number, and that number is going to take the place here. We want to execute it now. An execution is going to return a result set. Um, Query. And lastly, we probably want to print our results. Um, and we can do that by just iterating over the full result set. There's a convenient uh, method in there called next, which will return true if there are more results. It will not return true if there are not. Um, and we're just going to print a nice clean message. I'm just going to copy paste it for a second. In other words, we're going to print to system out a formatted string, which is just student ID, course ID, term and grade with placeholders here. And then we're going to put the values for those placeholders as additional arguments. Um, we have to know what data type um, the fields are. So if we're going to put a number in here, we use get int here. If we're going to put a string in here, percent %s, we're going to put get string in here. And that is really it for this demo. All we have to do is clean up after ourselves. So we're going to close our result set. We're going to close our statement. And we have to make sure that we uh, catch our exception. 
and we'll do the same thing again. Uh, we're just gonna say, okay, hey, something went wrong. Um, print that error message and be done with it. And that's the end of our program. So let's save this and um, execute it on our server. Okay, we're ready to execute. I have the program here. Um, you see it's the same one we just uh, looked at on the, uh, the previous um, program. Now, let me just make sure we start from a clean slate, so all the class files go. The easiest way to do this on the server is to compile it here. So we're just going to go Java compiler. Um, and what are we compi compiling? Well, the name of our program was Java PSQL demo. So that's what we're compiling. If we made any mistakes, the compiler would have given us error messages here. And now it's not a matter as simply as now running uh, the code, unfortunately because it's going to yell at us. And that's because we haven't included um, the appropriate libraries in our class path yet. If you're used to dealing with uh, GUI Java, that often gets hidden from you. But Java needs to know exactly where all of its libraries are, especially when those libraries are in system libraries. So the way to do that here is by explicitly giving it the class path. The class path is the place where Java will look. We want the current directory, that is um, backtick, pwd backtick, that's print working directory. Um, and we want to have the jar file containing the Postgres links. Then we can run our class with the first command line argument is the course number that we're interested in. We have to include this one, um, the current working directory, otherwise we wouldn't be able to find the program we just wrote. We also have to include this one, otherwise we cannot find the drivers. When we have both in them there, the program works like this. And it just prints out to standard out what we need. But keep in mind, we need to control our class path here. There's different ways you can do this. We could do this through the environment variables. We could do that through um, just having the current directory in here. But either way, uh, we have to do the class path, including the current directory containing the code that we wrote, or I should say the compiled version of the code we wrote, as well as the jar file containing all the Postgres links.